Hey ya folks and hobbyists, so in this one we're going to be upgrading from GNOME 47 to GNOME 48. Now why are we on KDE for this video? Because the last Linuxy thing I did on the channel was switch from XFCE to KDE, and wouldn't you know it, we're still on KDE. But no longer, we are on GNOME now. Does it not say the GNOME version? It says it in here, maybe? Yeah, there we go, GNOME 47 using Wayland. Linux kernel 6.2, 6.12 LTS, I can read. Now the last time I did something like this, I used Octopi, and here I have Octopi on GNOME, so Octopi is uh, cute. I think it's cute 5, it might be cute 6. Or no, they switched to cute 6. But anyway, this is a GTK desktop, so this is some kind of blasphemy. But I'm not going to use Octopi to do like a full upgrade, unless it, it just does it right here. Oh, and the confirmation says 1.86 gigabytes, 323 packages. So I don't believe it's locked the database yet. So let's use Paru, see what Paru has to say about this whole thing. Now Paru says 1905, 76, 10, and 90. Is that the same 1.86 gigabytes? Uh, no, not, I mean, kinda. Yeah, I guess that's close enough. And it's 325 packages, whereas Octopi says 323. I wonder why the difference. I wonder what that's about. But since this is a rather sizable upgrade, I am going to do console with Paru instead of Octopi, which could have all sorts of issues. So let's go ahead and let this upgrade. And I don't think it's going to go any faster. So this is going to take some time. Look, there's a kernel upgrade in there, too. I'm going to let it record in case something crazy happens. Uh, well, looks like it didn't like the... What is that, the VirtualBox DKMS module? But it's working on the NVIDIA one. I don't use VirtualBox all that much, so I'm not too worried about it. It's doing all the post-config stuff. And we have one AUR update, and it's for VS Codium. And that looks all fine. So EG does have some opinions about open and closed source software, and I am using VS Codium for a reason. And maybe at some point I will talk about that, but... That is a conversation for another video. I like to run it one more time just to make sure it doesn't find anything else, but I'm sure it won't. There is literally nothing else to do. So this is all well and good. Let's make sure that I can reboot and get back into the system. And we do that with sudo reboot. And we're back. Presumably this is the latest GNOME. We'll go to the Info Center and System Details. There it is, GNOME version 48. I did notice that my my bar was at the top and then it, it, it like switched to the bottom, so I wasn't expecting tweaks to turn back on. And by the way, it just started raining, so if you hear noise in the background, if I don't try to make it drown it out with music, that's what that noise is. It's pouring down rain right now. But here are my extensions. I have a bunch of them. So I used, I started out, I did the Debian thing. I did this on Debian years ago too. I don't know a good way of showing you what all I have, but basically I started on Cinnamon and then I installed XFCE and GNOME and a bunch of other stuff. And now my, my whole computer is kind of messed up, but I like it that way. I'm not looking to distro hop. I am just hopping between desktops and stuff. I guess the main extension I have is dash to panel. So it makes the the dash more like a Windows like panel, but I haven't really put much much effort into customizing this. A lot of my shortcuts and things are still broken and I don't know. I don't really like Nautilus. I I don't love the rounded corners and GNOME. It's fine. And I switched back to GNOME or I switched back to GTK because I had a lot of problems on KDE. I had a lot of issues with portals, which I can't really show you. I guess I can with with uh, OBS, but I don't want to mess around with my setup. But basically, if you were on KDE and you tried to pick a window to share, it would just say, oh, I, I can't find the window selector or whatever. And I had a similar issue with the wallet. In web browsers like Chrome and Vivaldi, the wallet was stuck in GTK land and KDE uses KWallet. And I'm sure that there's a, a sane way of fixing that, but I, I just can't be bothered with it. So I just went over to GNOME and I've been here. But now GNOME 48 is available. So what I'm going to do here is just kind of go through the release notes. So I was thinking as I was kind of taking pauses between 
takes and cuts here. This is a lot like a distro delve, honestly. If I was recording this live or if I was doing a delve, I would have my capture card and we'd be doing it on another device and it would be really, really fun. I didn't think of that for this. This was actually an idea that came to me yesterday or maybe the day before when I saw GNOME 48 had dropped and I figured you guys might want to watch a video on it. So let's take a look at some of the interesting things here and see what it looks like and hopefully make a fun little video for you even though we're probably like halfway into it. <laughs> so notification stacking, they have a cool little animation here. You can see that, that it pops open. See, I actually get a lot of notifications. Of course, I don't have any now. I was listening to, to Prince four hours ago, but if I had a bunch of stuff, it would be stacked like that, which is neat because I do have a lot of notifications and I even have weather that appears to be broken, but that's fine. The most significant of these is dynamic triple buffering. So is that performance or is that just kind of smoothness? Not that one's better than the other, but see, it, it improves the perceived smoothness on changes on the screen. So I have to say, you know, not everybody loves Wayland, but I am on Wayland. As you can see, Wayland, it is so smooth, and that's one of the things I love about it, is, is I'm really, apparently, really sensitive to frame rates, and it needs to be, it needs to be unchained, unhindered. I want maximum frame rates, and you can get that. That's the perceived smoothness, I think. So one of the things I love about Wayland is that it is so smooth, and it doesn't tear, ever, so... I have to say that GNOME is generally very, GNOME has been generally very, very smooth, so I don't know. I'm sure this is really, really great, but I don't notice any tearing to begin with, so I don't know if I'll even notice this. What else we got? JavaScript Engine got a an upgrade with, doesn't say upgrade, but it just says reduce C CPU and memory, which is fun. File indexing uses more or less memory. How much, how much memory is this guy using? Ah, this is KDE's system monitor, which I don't particularly like. Do I not have another one? I guess I have HTOP. And the system is... What is the system using? 5 gigs, holy schmoly. But I guess I do have a lot of stuff on, see? Oh, Baloo is running? Isn't... Isn't Baloo KDE? Who's Baloo? The ArchWiki says that Baloo is a file indexing and searching framework for Plasma. And Baloo is running in the background on GNOME? So, well, I guess there's some performance improvements that I can do to my system. Anyway, users with monitors directly attached to their discrete graphics cards will experience improved performance and stability. I don't know if that applies to me because I've got the dual, like the iGPU and NVIDIA or whatever. And then changes in files and GTK versions and stuff. That's pretty neato. All right, had to take a long cut for this one. So there's a new image viewer and I had to dig for it because of course it's not just called Image Viewer, it's not called Gnome Image Viewer, it's not Eye of Gnome. In fact, I actually don't remember what the heck it's even called. It's just called Image Viewer, but when you go to About Image Viewer, it's called Image Viewer, but in the repos, it's not called that. So <laughs> I installed a bunch of stuff to find it, but it's pretty cool. Gnome introduced a new default Image Viewer back in version 45. We're in version 48, so that was some time ago. Uh, I don't remember it. It wasn't memorable. So this is just image viewer and it has these controls off to the side, but I noticed where are they? So when you go into edit mode in a small screen, it adds them to the, the bottom and honestly it works pretty well. But so when you make it full screen, you get the controls off to the side and you can, oh, that's neat. I like that. See, I actually do this a lot, and I'm not very good by I'm not very good at doing it by hand, you know? So having tools like this is can I Well, I mean it's fine. Replace original. Can I see like what is it gonna look like though? Okay, I saved it as original and it just like it didn't do what I thought it would do. Okay, so here's what it saved. I don't that must have been a bug because like why would the user want it to do that? I hit it, I told it to save it and then it just closed it instead. So I don't know. It's cool though, it's a nice little tool. Just, it, I didn't expect it to do that. Next, we've got new fonts. So I don't know what fonts I am using, but it is not the default. Okay, this font viewer is not useful. Okay, I thought that I could actually change the font in settings. 
but as you can see, you cannot. But since we're in settings, there is this new well-being section. So digital well-being is a new section in the settings, I guess, app for GNOME. And it looks pretty neat once you have data, but since I just installed this, there's not really a whole lot to see. You can have eyesight reminders, movement reminders. You can have it play sounds, let you know, set a schedule, I see. Okay, so this is, this is neat. You can have a screen time limit, things like that. I don't think most people most regular users, desktop users, well, I don't think they're going to have much use for this, but it's a cool feature nonetheless. So if you want to change your fonts, you go to Tweaks. And the default font that I have is Noto, which is most, I actually don't like this font. So I, this is something that was put there by someone that was not me, because I most certainly did not choose that. The new font is named Adwadia Sans and Adwadia Mono is a customized version of the popular Intersans, which is actually pretty nice. That's a pretty nice font. So and I actually, you know what? Actually, it was called, it wasn't called, it was called Cantrill, wasn't it? So there wasn't a font called Adwadia before. And there it is. All right, now we have everything set up for Adwadia, Sans, and Mono. Now, I, I probably have to restart to get all of these changes, though. Ooh, I actually don't know if I like that. Nah, I think it does actually look pretty good in BTOP. And I was just looking at my processes while this filled up. Get a bit more data, but I see Blue is still running. K Activity Manager, which is uh, KDE. And what the heck is Local Search 3? That doesn't sound good. <laughs> now, another new feature is Preserve Battery Health. You can stop charging at 80%. Now this is something that I've been looking forward to. So apparently it's actually not very good for your battery to charge all the way to 100% every time. How do you do it? Includes a new option when enabled. The new battery is uh, in the battery charging option at the power. Where is it? Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know where that is. Show battery percentage. I like that. See, it's at 100%, and I guess that's not good for it. And KDE has this option. You can actually tell KDE when to stop charging your battery, and I've been surprised GNOME doesn't have that. And apparently they do, but I do not see it. So, I don't know. Right underneath that, though, is, whoa, is the new audio player app. Now, this is another one that took me some time to find. This is apparently called Decibels. It's a cute little audio player app. It looks like a GNOME app, but it has a cool feature. So that's me. I put it on a different track, so I should be able to just have it playing in the background, but you can speed it up. It's not too bad, actually. The fidelity is still pretty good, but if you turn it down, it just sounds off. I don't know. The song has kind of weird timing to begin with, but yeah, it's not bad. It doesn't say it's decibels, but the app is called decibels. <laughs> oh, it says, there you go. Renamed the app from decibels to audio player, just like that. It also changed the app icon. Now, I actually don't like the icon because there are too many icons that look like that. It's just a play button with some some squiggly lines in it so i get there's already too many icons that look too similar i get confused sometimes so i would definitely get confused by this icon and now the last big change i want to talk about or i guess i want to show you is the text editor has been refreshed with a cleaner and more focused interface for gnome 48. so let's take a look at this little script i got and it just it looks like gedit doesn't look like anything particularly special, though this pane right here is pretty neat. It used to be this thing on the bottom, I think. Some editors are like that, but this one is this cool little thing that pops out and you can change your spaces, your tabs, and all that jazz. It, it shouldn't be eight, it should actually be four, maybe two, right? Yeah, two. I didn't write this with, with this editor. I usually use VS Codium. But yeah, this seems to be working good. And there's a whole lot more changes, including some changes, HDR and time zone 
and we never did see the battery health, but I will send you off with one change I actually did want to show, and that is, where is it? Well, I'll just show it to you. It is maps. Now my location should not be enabled. Don't you dox me. I don't know, the maps app is just so random. And it has a lot of features. There's all these different layers, and I think that it has open... Oh, there's my location. Turn it off. But it's so funny. It even has a navigator with the actual navigations, you know? I guess this is meant to be used on a phone, so when you think about it, it's not that unusual, right? Gives you directions, information, Wikipedia link, elevation. That's kind of cool. Population. You can favorite it. I actually don't really know anybody in... I know, but I've been there. I've actually done this this trip before from San Diego to to Phoenix. I was just thinking of somewhere to go, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, this is a cool app. And I guess they made some changes. What was it? Maps modernization. Maps includes various interface enhancements, including spinners, animated star buttons, and redesigned point of interest editing window. So you can make your own annotations and reference them. Yeah, there you go. Look, open map tiles, open street map contributor. This is really cool. So you don't have to open up Google Maps or whatever. You just use the, the local one. It gives you a lot of information. But that's going to wrap this one up. So I'm going to play some Project Zomboid footage in the background. This is from my Project Zomboid hobby shop server, or I guess the Project Zomboid server that I host for the hobby shop. We have a core group of folks that play regularly, so if you want to play Project Zomboid and enjoy the Anthro mod and play with other people, now's a great time because people are playing. Now every once in a while I feel like making a video for this channel, whether it's a tech video or maybe possibly a, a car or motorcycle video, but I don't make as much content for it anymore, primarily because of time, but also, I don't know, I want to turn this into a diatribe, but Man, I've done a lot. I've looked at a lot of Linux stuff. I've looked at a lot of... I work in tech, and I've worked in, in tech and Linux for the past 10, 15 years. Long time. So sometimes it's hard to get the interest in, in passion going again. But really what has done it for me, and if you follow me on social media, Mastodon or Blue Sky, sometimes I post about this. Arch Linux has rejuvenated my love for... You know, I'd almost say Linux, but it's really just tinkering. It just, it feels like a tinkerer's operating system, and I didn't know that I wanted it so bad. I've even got a few more other tech topics that I could make little videos about, but the problem oftentimes is figuring out what to show you on the video. I did a few last year, and not really knowing what to put on the video, I used, like, game footage, and of course people are like, oh, this is interesting, but I don't really want to watch game footage while you talk, and... My style has never been and will never be talking head. You will never see me talking. I'm not a big editor, so I'm really good at talking. That is kind of my thing. So if you want to hear me talk, you're going to have to watch some game footage or just put me on in the background. But there is stuff for me to talk about. It's pretty much always the video portion that's hard. But I'll figure it out and get over it at some point. But until I do, what you should do is go to EGIO and subscribe. I think I have newsletters set up on there. At some point I will, so you should go there and visit it anyway. If you like what I do and you want to keep up with me, you can follow me on social media. Mastodon and Blue Sky is where I'm active. And I am also on Discord. I've got my Hobby Shop Discord server. It's where I post stuff like content and things first. We've got a Minecraft server. We've got a Project Zomboid server. And the Project Zomboid server is recent. People wanted it, and I kind of like playing it, so we set it up. So if there's another server you want me to host, maybe you can badger me enough, and I just might do it. But yeah, that'll wrap it up. How's that for a nice outro ramble? I appreciate all your support, and thanks for watching.